good morning everyone let us study the muscles of the leg so first so this is the left lower limb you can see this is the tibia this is a medial bone and this side we will have fibula we can feel the head of the fibula here okay and we can see this is the leg and the foot the muscles of the leg is arranged in three compartments in the front of the leg that is the extensor compartment we have the peroneal compartment and the posterior compartment okay so the posterior compartment is otherwise called the flexor compartment so we have the three compartments the flexor compartment the peroneal compartment and the anterior compartment or the extensor compartment in this video we will first learn only the names of the muscles of the leg okay first let's learn the names of the muscles of the front of leg muscles so the extensor compartment muscles are first one is this one the tibialis anterior you can see this is the tendon of the tibialis anterior so this is the tendon of the tibialis anterior and this is the muscle belly of tibialis anterior this tibialis anterior is taking origin from the lateral aspect of the tibia on the upper aspect of the upper part of the lateral aspect of the tibia and it is crossing see the ankle and going towards the medial aspect okay going towards the medial aspect to get inserted into the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal bone into the medial cuneiform and to the base of the first metatarsal bone since the muscle is crossing and going towards the medial aspect so it will cause inversion okay inversion of the foot and also it is crossing the ankle from the front so it will cause dorsiflexion of the ankle the next muscle of the front of leg is this one so as we see it is the tendon is going towards the great toe so this is called the extensor hallucis longus okay this muscle is called the extensor hallucis longus and this muscle is taking origin from the medial surface of the fibula you can see so this is a muscle so this is a muscle which takes origin from the medial surface of the fibula and it is crossing the ankle joint from the front and it is getting inserted into the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe and it will be getting inserted into the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe so the prime action action will be on the ankle and on the great toe so it will cause dorsiflexion of the ankle dorsiflexion at the ankle and also it will cause extension of great toe the next muscle of the front of the leg is this one you can see this muscle is passing towards the front of the ankle and it is splitting into four tendons okay and it is getting in, uh, inserted into the toes okay bones of the toes so this muscle is the extensor digitorum longus it's the extensor digitorum longus okay so it is taking origin from the lateral aspect of the condyle of the tibia you can see this is the tibia okay it's the lateral aspect of the condyles of the tibia it is taking origin from the lateral aspect condyle of the tibia and also from the fibula okay some of the fibers take origin from the fibula and it is crossing the ankle in the front and towards the lateral aspect you can see it is crossing the ankle in the front and towards the lateral aspect and it is splitting into four tendons one two three four to get inserted into the lateral four toes okay into the middle and the distal phalanx of the four toes the lateral four toes so it its prime action is on the ankle and also on the toes okay and also in the subtalar joints okay so it is causing the ankle dorsiflexion it causes foot to avert so the aversion of the foot and also the extension of the four toes and also the extension of four toes the last muscle of the front of the leg is the peroneus tertius first we can identify the tendon of the peroneus tertius here so peroneus tertius this is a belly of peroneus tertius which will look like as if it is a part of the extensor digitorum longus okay it will look like as if it is a part of extensor digitorum longus 
so this is the muscle belly of peroneus tertius this is the tendon of peroneus tertius this peroneus tertius takes origin from the distal part of the fibula distal part of the fibula and it crosses the ankle and get inserted into the into the see the lateral most metatarsal bone okay lateral most metatarsal bone that is the fifth metatarsal bone since this muscle is crossing the ankle it is a dorsiflexor but it is a weak dorsiflexor and since it is present along the lateral aspect so it will cause the eversion of the foot so it is an everter and a weak dorsiflexor of foot all the muscles of the front of leg are supplied by the deep peroneal nerve okay all the muscles of the front of the leg are all supplied by deep peroneal nerve next let's study the peroneal compartment there are two muscles in the peroneal compartment this one which is more superficial is the peroneus longus and below that this muscle is the peroneus brevis both the peroneal muscles take origin from the fibula both the peroneal muscles take origin from the fibula and the peroneus longus has an additional origin from the tibia also okay so it is taking origin from the fibula both of the muscles and it is crossing the ankle joint crossing the ankle joint you can see this and we can see the entire tendon in this specimen you can see this is the lateral aspect of the lateral aspect of the leg and we can see this is the peroneus longus tendon and below that the tendon what you see is the peroneus brevis so you can see it is crossing the ankle behind the malleolus you can see this is the lateral malleolus behind the lateral malleolus is crossing so this is the tendon of peroneus longus and we can see it is crossing the foot and get inserted into the medial side from the lateral it is going to the medial aspect and it is get inserted into the medial cuneiform it will get inserted into the medial cuneiform and also the base of the medial most metatarsal that is the first metatarsal uh, so, uh, the medial most metatarsal that is the first metatarsal bone since it is crossing the ankle behind the malleolus so when it contracts it will cause the plantar flexion it will cause plantar flexion at the ankle and since it is present on the lateral aspect it will cause eversion of the foot it will cause eversion of the foot so main action will be eversion of the foot and the plantar flexion at the ankle and this muscle this tendon also stabilizes the arches of the foot the next muscle you can see this is the peroneus brevis which will be again crossing the ankle behind the lateral malleolus and it will get inserted here itself you can see the tendon is getting inserted to the base of the you can see the tendon here is getting inserted onto the base of the fifth metatarsal bone okay tubercle present on the base of the fifth metatarsal bone so the prime action of this muscle is eversion of the foot it will cause eversion of the foot so both the peroneal muscles are innervated by the superficial peroneal nerve okay it is a branch of the common peroneal nerve now let's study the muscles of the posterior compartment of leg now what you are seeing is actually the posterior compartment of leg posterior compartment of leg has got two sets of muscles the superficial group of muscles and the deep set of muscles so what you are seeing this is actually the deeper muscles these are all the superficial muscles superficial muscles are actually three muscles together from the superficial set so this is the gastrocnemius so once we cut open the gastrocnemius we can see in this specimen where the gastrocnemius is cut once the gastrocnemius is cut what we see below that is actually the soleus the soleus is otherwise called as the peripheral heart because the contraction of this muscle will help the deep venous plexus which are present inside it to uh, pump the blood into towards the heart so it is called the peripheral heart okay so this is the gastrocnemius deep to it we have the soleus and we have a long small slender tendon 
called the plantaris so this is the plantaris you can see very small muscle belly here so very small muscle belly here and this is a very long tendon that is actually plantaris so these are superficial muscles the gastrocnemius soleus and plantaris now we'll study one by one first coming to gastrocnemius the medial head and the lateral head so this is the medial head and this is the lateral head the medial head takes origin from the uh, medial epicondyle of femur and the lateral head takes origin from the lateral epicondyle of femur and these two bellies together will fuse to form a larger tendon okay this tendon is called tendocalcaneus this tendocalcaneus is formed along with the tendon of the soleus okay now you can see this is the soleus this soleus mainly take origin from the soleal line of tibia and also partly from the fibula okay so from the soleal line of tibia and also partly from the fibula and uh, uh, this muscle actually fuses with that of the gastrocnemius and forms a common tendon called the tendocalcaneus okay so in this specimen you can see the tendocalcaneus very clearly so this is a tendocalcaneus so the insertion is common for both the muscles so insertion is onto the posterior aspect of the calcaneum okay it is getting inserted onto the posterior aspect of the calcaneum since it is crossing the ankle on the posterior aspect it is going to cause the plantar flexion of the foot okay it will be causing plantar flexion of the foot next small superficial muscle is actually the plantaris this is the plantaris the tendon of the plantaris the plantaris takes origin from the lateral supracondylar condylar ridge okay just above the origin of the uh, gastrocnemius okay so the lateral supracondylar ridge and this tendon also gets inserted into the into the calcaneum okay onto the posterior aspect of the calcaneum since this is also crossing the ankle this will be a weak plantar flexor and also it may act on the knee joint also okay it will cause a weak flexion at the knee joint and a weak plantar flexor of the ankle next let's study the deeper muscles okay so once we lift the tendon you can see the deeper muscles okay so we can see the tendons in order like this this is the first one this is the tibialis posterior the second one okay this is the flexor digitorum longus okay then the third one this more bulkier muscle what you could see here this one okay this is the see the flexor halicis longus so this is a flexor halicis longus so you can see it is the lateral most muscle on the deeper compartment lateral most muscle on the deeper compartment so this is the tibialis posterior this is the flexor digitorum longus and this is the flexor halicis longus okay first coming to tibialis posterior it takes origin from both tibia and the fibula and also the intervening introsius membrane and it goes behind the medial malleolus goes behind the medial malleolus you can see the tendon is passing behind the medial malleolus and goes to the sole and gives min multiple slips to get inserted into navicular cuneiform cuboid and also the second to the fourth metatarsals okay and also to second to fourth metatarsals the next mut muscle what you are going to see is this one okay this is actually the flexor digitorum longus as we see it is taking origin from the posterior aspect of the shaft of tibia posterior aspect of the shaft of the tibia and it is going behind the medial malleolus and it is getting inserted it's dividing into these four tendons and getting inserted into the distal phalanx of the the lateral four digits okay distal base of the distal phalanx of the lateral four digits that is about the flexor digitorum longus this is the flexor digitorum longus 
the first one is tibialis posterior then the flexor digitorum longus then the last muscle this bulkier muscle is actually the flexor hallucis longus so this muscle will come like this and the tendon will go behind the malleolus the medial malleolus and it will go and get inserted into the distal phalanx of the great toe it will get inserted into the distal phalanx of the great toe okay so all these muscles will cause plantar flexion at the ankle plantar flexion of the ankle and uh, the tibialis uh, posterior will cause the eversion of the foot uh, sorry the tibialis posterior will cause inversion of the foot okay since it is present medially it will cause inversion of the foot then the flexor digitorum longus will cause the flexion at the digits flexion of the digits the uh, lateral digits the lateral four digits and the flexor hallucis longus flexor hallucis long longus will cause flexion of the great toe along with the plantar flexion it will also cause flexion of the great toe the next muscle what we are going to learn is the popliteus so this triangular muscle is the popliteus you can see popliteus, popliteus takes origin from the femoral condyle okay from the lateral condyle of the femur we can see this is the lateral condyle of femur so it takes origin from the lateral condyle of femur and it runs all the way downwards and uh, it is inserted onto the surface posterior surface of tibia so this is actually the tibia bone okay this is actually tibia it is inserted onto the posterior surface of tibia above the soleal line so this line is the soleal line where the soleus takes origin from okay we cut the soleus muscle so this triangular muscle here is the popliteus takes origin from the femur from the lateral condyle of femur and is getting inserted onto the surface of the posterior surface of the tibia above the soleal line okay above the soleal line and this muscle helps in the initiation of flexion of knee joint okay so it helps in the initiation of flexion at the knee joint so that is called as unlocking muscle of knee okay popliteus is called as the unlocking muscle of knee and the nerve supply is same as that of all the posterior group muscle that is the tibial nerve so all these muscles will cause plantar flexion at the ankle plantar flexion of the ankle and uh, uh the tibialis uh, posterior will cause the eversion of the foot uh, sorry the tibialis posterior will cause inversion of the foot okay since it is present medially it will cause inversion of the foot then the flexor digitorum longus will cause the flexion at the digits flexion of the digits the uh, lateral digits the lateral four digits and the flexor hallucis longus flexor hallucis long longus will cause flexion of the great toe along with the plantar flexion it will also cause flexion of the great toe all the posterior compartment muscles are supplied by this nerve the tibial nerve okay all the posterior compartment muscles are supplied by the tibial nerve which is actually a branch coming from the sciatic nerve okay it's actually a branch coming from the sciatic nerve so this is a sciatic nerve which will be dividing into tibial and common peroneal this is the common peroneal branch okay so that is the end of the muscles of leg thank you